Mr. Narayanan, first of all, a very hearty welcome to you to our campus. Uh, given the road traffic, uh, he arrived just a very shortly before the event, so he didn't get the usual opportunity to see the campus, but we'll make sure that we <coughs> get to do that. Uh, but I do want to say we're delighted to have you here for what is perhaps one of the most important days in the life of our graduating students, Newtons as we call them, anything which where NU fits in, <coughs> we try and fit it in uh, for the convocation day. And this is also a very special day for each graduating Newton. <coughs> and let me first congratulate each one of you uh, for successfully achieving what you set out to do <coughs> from the day that you set your feet here on this campus. And I'm delighted to inform each one of you as Newtons that, um, <coughs> that how fortunate you are that on this very important day, uh, you get, <coughs> you get um, the opportunity to listen to Mr. Narayanan. And, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. And of course, I'll be, we'll, we'll wait for Vijay to introduce him properly. And you will recognize that this day, which is important for you, will also be memorable because you heard and listen to one of the one of the better and one of the best, if not one of the leaders in our country at this time. And Vijay will uh, talk about him in some detail. <coughs> so, Mr. Narayanan, a few comments that I want to make <coughs> to apprise you of a particular dimension of the growth of our young students, of Newtons. Uh, which is also, also should be a reminder to all of you youngsters who came here four years ago for the undergrads and two years for the postgrads, <clears throat> that reinforcing some thoughts uh, which uh, uh, you would carry with you. And these pertain basically to matters beyond the academic purpose, which is the purpose they've all come here for. And uh, as they have involve themselves and immerse themselves. <coughs> Sorry, this is <coughs> in the am academic matter leading up to the degree. They've also been undergoing development and growth as individuals. And I want to refer to some of those matters that transform each Newton, each of you. And that's our aspiration to transform you into a more sensitive, caring, and responsible citizen of the world. Mindful of your obligations, not just to yourself, but also to, to nature, to the environment, to all sections of society, and of course to each and every person that you interact with. Now, it is our practice here that the incoming batch, the freshmen, they go through a very intense induction program <coughs> that we call resonance. And in the very first week is their first encounter with nature. And um, their encounter is with nature and with life in a very, very visceral way, in a very visceral way. And they plant a tree, and we ask them to name it after someone close to them. And uh, since that would happen on the second or third day and they had made some friends, they would write the names of someone they found very interesting, except that if that interest got lost after some time, the tree would wither away. So then Jen Singh, a few years ago, changed the practice. He said, you have to write your mother. It has to be a mother's name that you give to the tree. And we've seen the survival of the plants is radically better. But then they walk up the hillock. We are fortunate to have the Aravalis just behind us to a spot which we call the Suryode Stal to experience the energizing effect of sunrise. We think we, we want them to get accustomed to the rhythm of the day, which starts with the sunrise. They experience that and they walk the hillock uh, along with their Commodore Kamal. I just introduced you to him. <coughs> and he tells me that now this keeps evolving. He tells me that uh, they connect the connection which is going to be in many dimensions, but the connect with nature starts 
as it happens. And he tells me that nowadays when they go halfway, he wants them to stop in silence and recognize the number of different sounds of birds and to do a count, how many different, and they have a little bit of a competition, but they start connecting with nature. Uh, I'm told that they have become very mindful and they're made mindful of walking and you see the little, you know, all of us, not many of us have seen in these, the, the, the convoys of ants and they become mindful and they sidestep, give them their space. <clears throat> they start noticing the diversity of flora. They uh, look back when they go up a little, and that's more valid in the last few years. They look back and see the contrast of the land where they're at and what's happening with the greening that's going down here. And they will walk down to a sewage treatment plant. Normally people don't like that phrase, but for us it's a matter of religion, should we say, because almost all the water and waste that comes out, 97% I'm told, is treated, recycled, and pumped uphill into tanks and then through drip irrigation, we are creating a greening which you will get a chance to see. Um, they all experience the other phenomena of how we treat air. We don't use air conditioning barring a few critical places, laboratories and so on. That we use geothermal cooling. So four meters under the ground, the temperature is 24 degrees anywhere in the world and we use that to cool the air in the summers and warm it in the winters and wash it. And that's what comes into the room. So it's not recycling in the room like in air conditioning, it's just moving out, so fresh air. And so you recognize the role of the earth as, as the source of that energy around the year. And then on some of the evenings during that time, they are made to sit. Now, as you can see, this is the kind of a terraced uh, top. So above that, we have a open uh, amphitheater facing the west, and they get the opportunity then to experience the setting sun, which we see, and all of us know that that's when the day is folding and it makes you introspective. Um, so many more things, but this, this is what they experience early on. And then uh, General Ashok Singh, A.K. Singh, who is the chief of operations, also dean of students, takes the responsibility to ensure that in the remaining few weeks, of, of the induction program, uh, they are uh, made to become mindful of many things around sustainability, around connectedness, and around a word that we consider very important. It's one of our four core principles, and that is seamlessness. So <clears throat> on sustainability, the first thing that comes to our mind is water, because when we came here, we, there was no water here. We were told that water and sewage, we manage, it was just wilderness here. Now you see the Japanese sector. So they learn, they see for themselves how, what we used to learn in geography lessons, that how you, the water evaporates and then comes as cloud, but for that you need to have an environment which can uh, build humidity. And they see that this water coming from the STP going uphill, coming down, then the trees are getting formed, and they have, the environment is changing, and they see the full experience. Uh, you will notice uh, there's a zero plastic campus. We worry about ecology, and there's a great emphasis on recycling everything. So sustainability is something which can't be taught in a classroom. People have to live it, and uh, we try and introduce them to that. We could introduce them to connectedness with nature, of course, to the community. They all have to work with the community in the neighborhood. And there are many com connections that get established between themselves, not just in the batch, but in the house, the, the allegiance to your house, allegiance to your sports team, allegiance to your club. We have more than 20 of them. And uh, then the community work. So there's a whole lot of emphasis on the connectedness. And of course, all around development. And I've touched on some of these things before. So now, <clears throat> it is my experience in these uh, 13 years now, even before that, that campus design, laying out the campus, which is the setting, the built spaces, cleanliness, orderliness, provide the ambience within which people grow. And in which they develop their minds, their habits, their behaviors, and sensitivities. 
Now, I also know that in the induction program, everybody gets to know this, and then it becomes second nature, and we take it for granted. But those who visited here after many years would tell us that it keeps coming back to them in subconscious, unconscious ways, and does influence their thinking, and we expect them to carry these values as they go into the work, workplace and influence society. Now, this graduating ceremony <coughs> uh, celebrates all of this in addition to the core activity they came here for. And uh, this year, the induction program, when it got over, we, you know, we, we first Saturday of the month had spent time with all faculty, we get together. And this time, they were playing back, the students as well as faculty, on the experience with the batch. What did they find meaningful? And I have to say this, not that it's news, but it was really heartwarming to see the faculty talk about how they've been looked after by faculty members. They're available whenever they want them. So it was quite, I think to me, very good to hear that first-hand news, and therefore our faculty were very committed, our, our vice president, our deans, our HODs, all of them contribute to the main thing of which the students have come for, which is to get the degree, but also, as we saw, to become citizens of the world. So, very hearty welcome to you and to all of you, and I think we have some parents here who put the faith in us some time ago, um, which we hope we have lived up to and lived up to the obligation and your expectations. And I think as all of you as Newtons embark on the new phase of life, uh, we all want to wish you well, I want to wish you well, and all, all the best for a great Convocation Day. Thank you.